Today's video is sponsored by DraftKings. Having trouble winning games in Madden 23? No! Struggling on offense or defense? Well, the answer might be a simple adjustment that you didn't even know you could make. In today's video, I'm going over 12 tips, tricks, and cheats that will give you an unfair advantage in Madden 23, whether you're playing offense or defense. But before I do, if you're enjoying the content and want to see more, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. I've already made several videos like this focused specifically on just offense or Woo! defense. So if you guys want to see more videos like this, I will have links in the description as well as on-screen pop-ups at the end of the video. So stick around for that. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. I was really excited when DraftKings reached out to me to promote their product as I use their app every week to play daily fantasy football. If you watch my channel, you might know by now that I am a Philadelphia fan, and other than watching my team win the Super Bowl, the second most exciting game in my life was watching a boring defensive struggle between New Orleans and Carolina a few years ago. Why? Because I had a first place ticket that was winning me thousands of dollars for just a $10 entry, and it suddenly felt like I was winning the Super Bowl. It's a feeling that's hard to describe, but DraftKings has so many ways to make watching sports more fun. Download the DraftKings Sports app now. New customers use promo code MONEYSHOT, bet $5 on any NFL playoff game, and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code MONEYSHOT only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Yep, that's right. New customers bet just $5 on any NFL playoff game of your choosing, and you'll instantly get $200 in bonus bets deposited into your account. Wondering what you can do with $200 in bonus bets? Try out Same Game Parlays, where you can combine multiple bets from one game, like which team will win and by how much for a shot at even bigger winnings. If mobile sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry, as you can still get it on the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy. My first tip is something you can do on offense and defense, and that is spamming action buttons. When running the ball, whether on a run play or running after the catch in Madden 23, you will often get into tackle battles, as it is a pretty new feature that was recently added back into Madden 23. So whether you're on offense or defense, you should get into the habit of repeatedly spamming the A button if you are on Xbox or the X button if you're on PlayStation every single time contact is made between the defender and a ball carrier, regardless of what side of the field you are on, so you can instantly win these tackle battles, or at the very least, give you a much higher chance of success. This also also goes for when you are trying to catch the ball on offense or defense as it removes the need to time the catch instead always resulting in a perfectly timed interception on defense or catch on offense. My next tip is how to hide an adjustment which will really come in handy when I get to the defensive cheats and I show you how the quarterback's adjustment animations can give away what type of play your opponent is about to run. Luckily in Madden 23 you have the ability to hide at least one adjustment animation while your quarterback is walking to the line of scrimmage that won't show up to your opponent. This is because he is already locked into an animation where he is made to look like he is surveying the defense. This animation was implemented in the Madden so that you can't hike the ball before your opponent has a few seconds to set up their defense. You can also only make one adjustment as this is another restriction that was added to Madden to slow down the offense and help the defense. So while locked into this adjustment, if you want to change plays, make hot route adjustments, or flip a run play without your opponent knowing it, all you have to do is make the adjustment before your quarterback gets set. But remember that you only get one adjustment, so choose wisely. Next up, since we were talking about quarterbacks, let's go over a passing tip, and that is pocket presence, which is really important in Madden 23. In this year's Madden, the entire game is programmed to force you to stay in the pocket, mostly due to players not really enjoying playing against mobile scrambling quarterbacks. You can still run with the quarterback, but it's most likely going to be between the tackles, as trying to escape the pocket outside the tackles will immediately result in the edge defenders getting off their blocks. So rolling out in the pocket to buy time is much less common now. There are several penalties that result from dropping back too far in the pocket as well that kick in when you reach exactly 15 yards behind the line of scrimmage. These penalties include the receiver's icons disappearing with no way to bring them back up and even worse if you try to throw a pass from behind that same 15 yard distance you will get an inaccurate pass pop up and a horribly thrown ball that is more likely to get intercepted than anything else. So make sure when passing to stay in between the tackles and make sure not to drop further than 15 yards. But if you do either of these things just push in the right stick to safety throw the ball out of bounds which is all always better than a sack or an interception. Next, I'm going to go over tips when running the ball, starting with tips for running with the quarterback. If you plan on running with the quarterback or any design runs for receivers or any players other than actual running backs, you will notice they fumble a lot. Quarterbacks especially are programmed to fumble, but there are several ways to mitigate this, one of which is by always remembering to slide, which you can do by double tapping the X or square button whether you're on Xbox or PlayStation. Just make sure to do this with plenty of space before any oncoming defenders as doing this too late can result in a tackle animation anyway and a potential fumble. 
But if you are planning on running these type of plays a lot, a much safer and much better option is to go to your coaching adjustments on offense and set your ball carrier to conservative, as it will significantly reduce your chances of fumbling and you won't even have to slide anymore. So to me, this is the only offensive adjustment worth having on at all times. Next up, if you are ever in a situation where a specific player or even your entire offense is experiencing fatigue, there is a cheat that will allow them to regain their stamina at a much faster pace simply by rotating through the formations. Some people don't believe this, but even pro players do it, as you can see that by spending a good 20 seconds between plays rotating through formations will cause all of your tired players to turn a few shades lighter before the next play. You can also call a timeout to get stamina back or wait for official timeouts like end of quarter and two minute warnings to get rest time to improve their stamina as well. Next up, man cover zero is the meta this year, and most people think the best way to handle this is by blocking players like tight ends and running backs to pick up extra defenders. But most people don't know that when you do this, it actually makes the defense better, as defenders that are manned to those same players will turn into deep coverage safeties that will double team and take away your deepest passing options in their area. Like on this play here, which is a one-play touchdown out of my Saints offensive ebook, link in the description and top pick comment if you guys want to check that out. On this play, I'm going against a very popular man defense, the Overstorm Brave, where all I have to do is put the X route on a streak to get a very easy one-play touchdown. But if I want extra blocking, the only player I can block is the running back. A better way to have your cake and eat it too is by putting your running back on a check and release. He will now stay home long enough to pick up any defenders that come in too fast, and he will also hold the safety's attention in coverage since he is still technically in a route. On defense, since everyone is playing man coverage, it's best to know all the things that man coverage can do with the shade functions, as most people don't use these nearly enough. I just did an entire video breaking this down, so if you guys want to know more about this, I'll once again have links in the description. In short, if you hit the wire triangle button to bring up your coverage adjustments, you will see the option to shade in four different directions. And these directions are actually stackable, meaning you can shade inside and underneath at the same time, for example. If you want to protect against deep routes, shade over the top, although this will allow short routes more separation. If you want to take away short routes like slants, drags, zigs, and comeback routes, shade underneath. But only do this when you have safeties over the top, as a simple streak can result in an easy one play touchdown. Stacking this by shading inside will make the coverage more effective against slants and drags, while stacking this and shading outside will make coverage more effective against outbreaking routes like zigs and corner routes. Next up, I'm going to go over some coaching adjustments as one of the most important ones is ball in the air defense. Since aggressive catching is so overpowered this year, I find it's best to set this to play receiver, as doing this will trigger more knockout animations since the defender will attack the receiver and not the ball. But if you like to play more zone coverages than anything else, it's probably best to play the ball for more interceptions. If you like to play match coverages like cover four quarters or cover four palms, you are going to want to set your zone coverage adjustment from default to match, or you won't actually be getting the full benefit of the matching principles. And these type of defenses will play more like soft cover four drop, where the deep safeties will prioritize not letting anyone get behind them rather than playing tighter matching coverage. Next up, a lot of people know that in Madden, it's a bad idea to guess run unless you're absolutely certain your opponent is going to run. But most people don't know that guessing pass is just as bad if you guess wrong in Madden 23. In year years past, there really wasn't any penalty at all, meaning you could pass commit all game. But if you were wrong this year, you might have noticed that your opponent's run game suddenly feels like it's superhuman, and that is by design, as guessing pass at the wrong time will cost your team in several ways. Guessing pass on a run play will make blocks hold up longer for the offense, and if you're in a small defensive package, you will notice that you also get pancaked much easier. But you will also notice that your defenders will be slower in pursuit, which all these combined can turn any run to an easy house call for your opponent. So unless you know what your opponent is about to do, it is best to do nothing at all. Next up, if you avoid playing in coverage as a user, you might not be able to affect the game as much as you would like. So whether you're afraid of making a costly mistake or you just don't have enough experience, if you want to get better and need a little help, EA actually has a feature in the game designed to make this a little bit easier for you, and that is the press or chuck receiver function. This is a fairly new and rarely used function in the game. All you have to do to use it is to stand in front of the receiver you want to cover, press down on the right stick and hold the A or X button once again with your Xbox or PlayStation, and you will ride the receiver down the field letting their route guide your defender until you decide to let go. And last but not least, I'm going to go over quarterback animations when making adjustments and how they give away the type of play your opponent is going to run. There are two different types of animations in the game. One where the quarterback taps his shoulders like this when he is under center, or if he is in shotgun, he will tap the side of his leg. If you see either of these animations, you should immediately know that your opponent is in a run play, and that is because this is the animation that comes up when it is being flipped. Technically, you could run commit when you see this, but if your opponent is savvy enough, they could always use fake audibles, as you can use the flip run function while in a passing play, it just doesn't do anything. 
The only other animation the quarterback will make is when they turn and shout up or down the line of scrimmage. This animation is much harder to identify as this animation is triggered when they change the play, make hot route adjustments, or protection calls. But it is safe to say that if you see your opponent going through several animations like this, that is safe to pass commit, as they are most likely going to pass unless the last time you see this they are switching to a run play. So that's that's the vid. If you guys enjoyed this content and want to see more, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, and let me know in the comment section. I already made some more videos like this that focus specifically on offense and defense, and I will have them popping up on screen now. So if you want to learn more, just click the links as I'm sure it will help out your game. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. My shit out.